church hear what the Spirit is saying to us in these readings today. This morning I'm going to engage in a little midrash, a little rabbinic interpretation, particularly of the story of Jonah. And it was interesting to me to go back and look again that for the rabbinic scholars, midrash had different elements. One was called peshat, or the literal or plain meaning of the text. Another one was remed, the deep meaning, the hints that you find in the text. Another one was derash, the comparative meaning, to inquire or to seek as you read the text. And the last was sod, the hidden meaning, the secret or mysterious meaning of the text. And most of the rabbis focused on remez, the deep meaning of the text, and the derash, the comparative meaning, or the meaning to inquire or to seek. And I don't know what I'm doing today, but I just thought that was interesting. <laughs> I'm doing some of that stuff. I think I'm doing deep meaning, maybe, but we'll see. There are times in our lives when it feels as though our fate is entirely out of our hands. Times when it feels like there is some inscrutable power impacting our lives over which we have no control. If only we could get rid of that thing, that person, that event, that condition, that history, that enemy, everything would be all right. The problem is, the truth is that sometimes, maybe even most of the time, our fate is out of our hands. We are dealt difficult hands in life, economic circumstances, the place and time and circumstances of birth, genetic tendencies, and so on, things that we do not choose. We make choices without fully knowing what we're choosing. Yet we have to deal with the consequences of all those things that are outside of our control, consequences like toxic relationships, lost jobs, cancer or depression or addiction. And if this kind of thing is true for us, living here in one of the wealthiest and most powerful nations on earth, imagine how it is for men, women, and children fleeing Syria, or for those who can't flee from a place like North Korea, for the undocumented person desperate enough to leave behind their own home and family for a chance at a new life, or for the many millions living in deep poverty across the globe in places of hunger and weariness. Imagine how it must have been for people like Simon and Andrew, James and John, fishing for a living in a backwater village in a conquered land, people whose fate seemed to be in the hands of a foreign empire, corrupt public officials, and the vagaries of the sea. Who were they against such things? Even their God must have seemed inscrutable, a distant presence who appeared unable to alter their fate, a strict judge who would condemn them if they did not live up to his demands. If only they could, if only we could get rid of that thing, that person, that event, that condition, that history, that enemy, that inscrutable power we call God, pressing down on our lives, then everything would be all right. That's the way it feels sometimes. The thing is, neither the Bible nor our faith promise us that we can get rid of those things or that we will not face many things in life, even terrible things that are outside of our control. That's not the promise of faith. The promise of faith, the good news that Jesus preached, is that there is another way for us to be, another way to see ourselves, our neighbors, and even God, another way to live our lives in the midst of all these challenges, another way that changes everything for us. The book of Jonah is one of the great stories in the Bible. One scholar calls it one of the Bible's literary gems marked by symmetry, balance, wordplay, irony, and surprise. The story, he said, is not history. Scholars have called this book an allegory, a legend, a novella, a parable, and a satire. But the view that it is literal, a literal account of the prophet's adventures can't be sustained. Yet, like all scripture, this little gem is a novella or parable with a point. And I'm sure you know the story. God calls Jonah to go to the city of Nineveh to proclaim God's judgment, but Jonah flees, heading in the other direction, and ends up in a storm in the sea 
and finally in the belly of a whale for three days before reluctantly relenting to God's command. That's where our scripture reading picks up today.